Now, when we're dealing with discrete probabilities, which binomial probabilities are, are one specific type of discrete probabilities, it's very important how we translate the wording of problems into math symbols. So some phrases that you're going to run into are at least, no less than, or greater than or equal to. All three of these would translate into this symbol, a greater than or equal to. And the important thing here is which values are included and which values aren't included. Since we're talking about discrete probabilities, it makes a huge difference whether you include certain values or not. So this would mean that whatever value you have here is actually included in your list because of the equal sign being with that. Now if we have a more than or a greater than, that trans translates into just a greater than symbol and that means that the actual value that's over here is not included because there's not an equal symbol here. Fewer than or less than translates into a less than and again this means that whatever value is here is not included. No more than at most or less than or equal to translates into less than or equal to sign which means we are including the value. And exactly, you'll see this one a lot in these problems, exactly or equals or is translates into an equal sign and that means we're dealing with one value only. Here's some examples. According to the Experian, Experian Automotive, 35% of all car owning households have three or more cars. So the first question is, in a random sample of 20 car owning households, what is the probability that exactly five have three or more cars? Well, first we need to make sure of whether this is a binomial experiment or whether we're dealing with something different. So if we look at those requirements again, we have a fixed number of trials because we have a random sample of 20 households. So our number of trials is 20. Since the population of car owning households is going to be extremely large, we can assume that our number of trials, 20, is going to be less than 5% of that population size. So we would consider the trials to be independent, even though we would be selecting without replacement. And we do have two possible outcomes, and that is either the household has three or more cars or it doesn't. And our probabilities are going to be the same for each trial because we have this information that 35% of all car owning households have three or more cars. Our probability of success on each trial would be 35%. Okay, so the two outcomes for each trial are success, that there are three or more cars in the household. Failure, there are not three or more cars in the household. And this is something that we can define when we're setting up the problem. So I just decided to define success as there being three or more cars in the household. And one way you can look at this is look at what question you're being asked. What are you trying to find the probability of? Up here, we're trying to find the probability that exactly five households have three or more cars, that they do have three or more cars. So that's one reason that we could define this event as something, as a household having three or more cars as our success, because that's what we're trying to find a probability for. And again, since we already know that 35% of the households do have three or more cars, that means the probability of success on each trial is 35%, or we have to put this in a decimal form to use our calculator, so this would be 0.35. And the question that we're asking is the probability that exactly five have three or more cars. So we're looking for exactly five successes. This translates to just x is equal to five. We're looking at just a single value here. So we want to find the probability that x equals 5, or we usually write this as just p of 5. On your calculator, 
you would put in 20 for the n, 0.35 for the p, and 5 for the x. And remember to make sure that this is binome PDF. And if you calculate this, you should get 0.1272 if you round it to four decimal places. So again, try this out on your calculator and make sure that you're getting this value. Let's look at another probability problem with the same experiment. So here we want to know the probability that at most five of our 20 households have three or more cars. At most five is going to translate to x is less than or equal to five. So we're trying to find the probability that x is less than or equal to five. And what this means, because we've got the equal sign here, is that we're going to include 5 in our list of outcomes for our event. So the outcomes we're including in this event are everything from 0 up to 5. Now going back to our probabilities from chapter 5, since these events are mutually exclusive, we can't have both 1 and 2 households that own 3 or more cars. It has to be only one of these. So that means that we can use the addition rule for probabilities, which means we can add up, we can find the probability for each of these, and then just add the results together to get our probability. So this would be one way to calculate this probability. This would mean you'd have to put in binome PDF and put in 0 for x. Here you'd put in 1 for x, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So you have to do that function six different times and then add all the results together. That's kind of a lot of work. So there is a shortcut. There's another function on your calculator that instead of binome PDF is binome CDF. The C stands for cumulative. So what this does is it finds the probability for X less than or equal to C for whatever value of C you put in here. So if we wanted to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 5, we would put a 5 in here in place of the c. Now this only works this direction. So as long as we have a less than or equal to, then this will give us the answer that we're looking for. So to use it here, you would get this function on your calculator, calculator the binome CDF, Put in 20 for n, 0.35 for p, and 5 for x. The value you get should be 0.2454, rounded to four decimal places. So test this out and make sure that you can get this value. Now another problem with this same setup. Now we want to look at the probability that at least one of the households has three or more cars. So first we need to translate this into symbols. At least one translates to x is greater than or equal to one. So what we're looking for is the probability that x is greater than or equal to one. In terms of outcomes, x greater than or equal to one would include all the possible values for x from one all the way up to 20. Remember for a binomial experiment that the possibility possible values for x go all the way from 0 up to our number of trials, which is 20. Now the problem here is that our binome CDF function that we just looked at calculates less than or equal to. It does not calculate greater than or equal to. So that one isn't going to help us here. And we certainly don't want to put in one function for each of these 20 numbers and then add, add all those results together. That's way too much work. So a shortcut to do this would be to use the complement rule. So the complement of the event at least one success is no successes. So the complement of this event is just that x is equal to 0. So what we can do is we can find the probability that x is 0 or the probability of no successes, and then subtract that probability from 1 to find the probability that we're actually looking for. So since we want the probability that x is actually equal to 0, 
we would use our binome PDF function, which just calculates one value, put in 20 for n, 0.35 for p, and 0 for x. This would give us 0 0.00018. If we round this to four decimal places, we get 0 0.0002. Now that's the probability for no successes. To find the probability for at least one success, we have to subtract this from one. So if we do one minus 0 0.0002, we get 0.9998. So the probability we're looking for of at least one success is 0.9998.